Hello, assalamu alaikum. I hope you are fine. Whoever is watching this video, and uh, let us start with the first question. In the test, you got IUPAC name of CS3, CH, CL, CH, BR, and CS3. Now, first of all, this is a condensed structure. In order to make the condensed structure, I will suggest you that you make CH3 that is bonded to CH, that is bonded to CH, that is bonded to CH3. Whenever you have brackets, leave the brackets and you first of all make the main chain as I have made CH3, CH, CH and CH3. Now this chlorine will be bonded to CH, whatever is previous to it. BR will be bonded, whatever is previous to it. Okay, so CL is branched out with, CL is branched out with from CH and CH is branched, has a branch which is bromine. Now let's look at the nomenclature. Now, in this case, as you know, that we don't have any functional group, and that is why for functional group, we will write E. And then there is unsaturation. Unsaturation means, is there any double bond or triple bond between the two carbon atoms? No, there is no double bond or triple bond. If there was a double bond, then we would have written E. And if there was a triple bond, then we would have written a Y N. But since both of them are not present, then I have written E. In that case, we write unsaturation as E. N. Now, the parent chain is but. Now comes the substituent. So, substituent is anything. That remains after the identification of parent, unsaturation, and functional group. Now, in this case, we have two different substituents. We have the chlorine and we have the bromine. Now, once we have identified the substituent, we come to the numbering. Now, numbering can be done in terms of 1, 2, 3, 4, as I have written in red, or 1, 2, 3, 4, as I have written in green. Now, what is the difference between these red and green? The difference is only that in the red one, bromine is bromo, the substituent bromo, it is coming at the second position. And from the green one, it is coming at the third position. Now that is the deciding factor here when you have a tie, because in both of these cases, you will get a branches, you will get the numbering three, two, and here also three, two. Now, in this case, you have to see the alphabetical order once you get a tie. So in alphabetical order, according to that alphabetical order, bromo will come first, that is why two bromo and chloro will come later, that is why three chloro. Okay, so B comes before C. Now, while writing the ring, it will be two bromo, three chloro, butane, and that is why the correct option is C, that is 2-bromo-3-chlorobutane. Now, moving on to the next question. Here we have to identify the reaction order from the given rate constant. Now, rate constant has this unit, and we can identify the order of reaction using this unit. In general, the unit of K, the unit of rate constant, it is equal to moles per liter to the power 1 minus N, second inverse. Now, if I will simplify this, then it will be mole 1 to the power minus mole to the power 1 minus n and liter to the power n minus 1 second inverse. Now, whatever the given unit is, liter to the power 1, mole inverse and second inverse. What I can do, I can tally the orders of either liter or I can tally the order of either mole to get the answer. In this case, I have tallied the orders, oh, sorry, I have tallied the powers of, I have tallied the powers of liter. So, liter's power should be n minus 1 and this is n minus 1 and it is equal to 1 in our case. So n minus 1 is equal to 1. That is why the order is going to be 1. This 1 will go here. It will become plus 1. So 1 plus 1 is equal to 2. A general easy way of identifying the order if you have been given the rate constant is that whatever power of n is equal to power of L plus 1. So please remember that if you have to identify order from the rate constants unit, then you will use this formula. It is very easy. N is equal to power to the power power of L to, and you will add one plus one. Next, we have calculated the overall order of a reaction, which has the rate expression K, A to the power of one, B to the power of one by two. Now, in this case, we have overall order will be equal to order with respect to A plus order with respect to B. Now, in our case, what do we have? Order with respect to A is one, order with respect to B is one by two. So two will be LCM and 2 plus 1 will be equal to 3, so 3 by 2. So the correct answer in this case, it is B. The correct answer in this case was B, second order. Now, moving on to this question of graph, graphical question we have here. Now, in this case, we have to identify the, uh, we have to identify the order from the graph. As you can see, what is happening here, as I increase the concentration of A, my rate is also increasing. Okay, so that is why we have a linear graph. We don't have an exponential graph. It is not increasing exponentially. That is why I will say that. And also it is not constant. No matter no matter what the concentration of A is, it is not constant. So in this case, it will be first order. Right? Since the rate is increasing linearly as the is increase in concentration of reactant, it will be first order reaction. As we know, R is equal to 
A into concentration of A is the equation. So following this equation, there will be a straight line with a positive slope because we have K which is really positive and will pass through our region because we don't have any intercept in here. Okay. So in that case, it is going to be uh, sorry, first order A. Moving on, we have order of the reaction can be zero or fractional. Yeah, that is true. It can be zero or it can be fractional. The second, uh, the reason they are saying is that we cannot determine the order from the balanced chemical equation. Now, this equation, this statement is also true. The statement of the reason is also true. But if I write order because reason, sorry, assertion because, not order, assertion because reason. Now read it in that way. Order of the reaction can be zero or fractional because we cannot determine the order from balanced chemical reaction. Now that statement is false. I know. So order of the reaction is experimentally determined and that is why it can be zero or fractional. Okay. But the reason is not giving me the correct explanation of the assertion. So both these statements are correct. So in this case, the option will be B. Both assertion and reason are correct. And reason is not the correct explanation of assertion. So B will be the correct answer. Now, the next case is, which of the following reagent gives the test for unsaturation? Unsaturation basically means alkenes or alkynes also you can say. Now in this case, we have only, this will be given if you have non-polar solvent in the presence of Br. Okay, So that is why A is the correct option, Br in the presence of Br2, bromine in the presence of CCl4, it is going to give you unsaturation. Now what Br2 plus you will like, this can react also with alkenes and Br2 and inside anhydrous AlCl3, it can also react with, it can react also with benzene. Okay, you know? That is why what we will say, we will say that only Br2CCl4 is going to give you a test for alkenes. When we have Br2CCl4, it gives vicinal dihalide. And when the reaction happens with alkene, it decolorizes the bromine water. It decolorizes the bromine water and that gives a positive result, positive test for alkenes. Next, we have defined the following terms, complex and complex reaction and activation energy. So complex reaction is just a reaction which takes place through a sequence of two or more consecutive steps. You know? So if we will have, it will not be done in one step. It is a multi-step process. And activation energy is the excess energy which must be supplied to the reactants or to undergo chemical reaction. Each and every reactant, it has some kind of energy. Now you have to give some excess energy. Now this energy is the activation energy that you have to give. Okay. So this is the activation energy that you have to give to form the products. Now moving on, differentiate between rate of reaction and the rate constant. A rate of reaction is simply the speed with which the reactants are converted into products. So it is related to speed of the reaction and it is measured as the rate of decrease of concentration of reactant or the increase in the concentration of the product. Okay. Now it depends on the initial concentration and the, of the reactant. If you have more concentration, then it will be faster. The rate will be faster and its units are always moles per liter concentration divided by time, change in the concentration divided by change in time. So mole per liter time inverse. Now, the rate or uh, reaction rate constant you know, or the rate constant, what we say is uh, the proportionality constant in the rate law and it is defined as the rate of reaction when the concentration of reactant is unity. So it is a specific thing. It is a specific rate of reaction. How it is a specific? It is a specific to the case in which we have the concentration of reaction as unity. Unity just means one molar. Unity just means one molar. When you have all the concentration, when you have the, all the reactants concentration as one molar, Whatever the rate will be, that will be rate of reaction. That is why it is also known as specific rate of reaction. Uh, obviously, it is independent of the initial concentration because we have specified the initial concentration to be one molar. If you change one molar, then it will not be rate of specific rate of reaction. It will not be rate constant. You know? It will change to rate of reaction. So it is independent of initial concentration. Next thing is that its units depends upon order of reaction. And as we have seen earlier also, its unit depends on order of reaction. So these are the three main Differences between rate of reaction and rate constant. Now, next we have two important questions from haloalkene and halorine. First is sulfuric acid is not used during the reaction of alcohols with KI. Now, why is it not used? It is not used because H2SO4, the use of H2SO4 is that H2SO4 will first of all ox will first of all act as oxidizing agent. And what it is going to do, it is going to convert KI into HI. Rather, in this case, it is not acting as an oxidizing agent, it is just acting as an acid here. So what happens? H2SO4 reacts with KI and it forms HI. Now this HI was supposed to be used. You know? Its use was what? It was supposed to be used with alcohol to give you RI. But what happens? We have a strong oxidizing agent such as H2SO4, which is still present in the reaction mixture. And that H2SO4, 
alcohol and H2SO4, which is more reactive, H2SO4 is more reactive. Now, H2SO4 is going to react with HI and it gives I2. Now, obviously, I2 cannot react with alcohol. So alcohol is lying there. It is not reacting with anything and it is not giving haloalkane. That is why we don't use a sulfuric acid during the reaction of alcohols with KI. Next is why is thionyl chloride preferred for the preparation of haloalkanes to form haloalkanes from alcohols? It is because when we react alcohol with thionyl chloride, we get a haloalkane. Then we get sulfur dioxide gas and we get hydrogen chloride gas. Now, when SO2 is going to liberate, it will go away. It will escape out as a gas. HCl will also escape out gas. We will only be remaining with haloalkane. We don't need any purification. We don't need any filtration here. That is why it is preferred. Next, we have write a chemical reaction for Swartz reaction, which is an easy reaction. You can either react this with HG2F2 or you can react with HGF. And it is also known as halogen exchange method in which chlorine is getting converted to fluorine. So from one halogen to another halogen. So we are exchanging the halogens from chlorine to fluorine. So in Swartz reaction, we form fluoroalkanes. Next is convert propene to 2-bromopropene. So it is also a very easy reaction in which you just need to add HBr. And that HBr in the absence of, in the absence of sunlight or UV light or anything else, it is going to give you Markovnikov addition in which we have the major product that is the carbon which has less number of hydrogen gets the Br, right? The negative part, this hydrogen is delta positive, this Br is delta negative, this negative part will attack on that carbon atom which has lesser number of hydrogen atoms. So this CH is there. This is also known as Markovnikov addition. So this you have got propene and here we have two bromos. The bromo is attached in the second position and two bromo propene. Now next is also a very important reaction that is show that the first order reaction time required show that the first order reaction time required for the completion of 99.9% .9 is 10 times of half life of the reaction. So first of all, let us look at the given things. For the first order reaction, time will be equal to 2.303 divided by the rate constant log of A0 upon A. A0 is the initial concentration and A is the remaining concentration of the reactant. Now, when we have 99% completion, let us take A0 as 100. That means initial concentration was 100. And if 99.9% .9 has been completed, that means we will have remaining concentration of A will be 0 0.1. 100 minus 99.9 .9 is going to give you 0 0.1. For 50% of completion, we will have initial as 100 and the remaining concentration will be 50 because 100 minus 50 is equal to 50. Now we will calculate the time taken for 99.9% .9 reaction. Now plugging in the values for this, in this equation, you will get 2.303 divided by K, 100 upon 0 0.1. Now for 100 upon 0 0.1, I can write 0 0.1 as 10 to the power of minus 1. Then 10 to the power of minus 1 will go above. It will become 10. 10 to the power 1 is equal to 10. So 100 into 10 will give you 1000. 1000 has 10 to the power 3. Now 10 to the power 3 is there. And using the rule of law, that log of A to the power B is equal to B times log A. Now in this case, what I will get? I will get log of 10 to the power 3 is equal to 3 into 10. 3 times log 10. Now log 10 it is equal to 1 because 10 to the power 1 will be equal to 10. So log 10 it is equal to 1. So I will get the equation as 3 into 10, 2.303 divided by k. And t 50 percentage it is equal to 2.303 divided by k log 100 upon 50. And if you cancel 50 to the 100, you will get log 2. And log 2 is values is 0 0.30. So we have 2.303 divided by k into 0 0.30. Now I will, what I will do, I will divide both of these equations, equation one divided by equation two. This, these two equations will be divided and you will get 99.9% .9 divided by 50% it is equal to three times 2.303 divided by K divided by 40, 50% we have 0 0.3 times 2.303 divided by K. Now 2.303 divided by K, 2.303 divided by K will be cancelled out 0 0.3, 10 times if you multiply 0 0.3 into 10 will be giving you three. So we have 10 here, and then I will shift this to 50% in the RHS, and I will get 9%. This is T99.9% .9 is equal to T99.9%. .9 it is equal to 10 times the half-life of the reaction, T50%. Next one is, again, important but easy question. A reaction is second order with respect to a reactant. Write the differential rate equation. And how is the rate of reaction affected if the concentration of the reactant is double? So differential rate equation will be equal to 
R that is equal to K K to the A square. So rate will be equal to K into A to the A square. Okay. Now in this case, what they're asking is how is the rate of reaction affected if the concentration of the reactant is doubled and be there at writing if it is reduced to half. Now in this case, I can write R1. I'm taking the first case that is it is doubled K into now the rate, now the concentration of reactant is doubled. That means we have two A. Initially we had A, now we have two A square because the order of reaction is two. Next we have K into two square into A square. I will write two square as four times k into a square k into a square is nothing but it is equal to the rate so i can write r1 when we double the concentration we it becomes 4r so rate will increase by four times next we have r2 in that case we have k into half of a so i have taken 1 by 2 into a square now then 1 by 2 square will come out and you will have a square again we will have 1 by 4 into k into a square it is going to give you 1 by 4r and that is why rate will decrease it will become 1 by 4 times now, there is one more thing that I want to write regarding this differential rate reaction. Since they have not given me the reaction, I will assume it to be 2A giving you some product P. Now, for this case, I can write rate is also equal to 1 by 2 minus DA. Upon DT. This is also equal to what rate? So this may be also the rate of uh, differential rate of rate equation which the teacher may be asking. But since they have not given an equation, they should expect this answer and not this answer because we don't know the stoichiometry. Okay. And you can write this will be equal to K into A square. Okay, I hope this makes sense now. Now moving on to the next question, complete the following reaction. The first one is a simple reaction of hydrogen halide. And in this case, we have specifically hydrogen chloride, also known as yeah, we have hydrogen chloride and it is reacting with an alkene. Now, this will follow Markovnikov's rule because we don't have any peroxide or we don't have any radical forming reagent. We don't have any UV light also. So, in this case, what is going to form? We are going to form a, we are going to do a Markovnikov, simple Markovnikov addition. Now, according to Markovnikov, the negative part of the reagent, it adds on that carbon with less hydrogen on the carbon on the carbon with less hydrogen okay so we have two carbons in which the reaction can happen one and two now you can count the number of hydrogen very easily for the first case for the first carbon atom this carbon atom the red carbon atom how many hydrogens do we have you just need to do the simple equation four minus number of bonds so we have four and number of bond is equal to three. So we have four minus three that is equal to one. So it will have one hydrogen. If I look at the second one, it has one, two, three, and four bonds. So four minus four, that is equal to zero. So this has, has zero bonds. So according to Marconi possible, what is going to happen? The chlorine is going to get attached on this position. That is the green carbon atom. Simple Marconi addition. And this happens because if the chlorine, when the chlorine was not here, the positive charge was here. And this is a more stable radical. So it is a more stable Intermediate, it is a more stable carbocation. That is why we will have chlorine here. And the next equation is when we have Br2 in the presence of UV light. So when we have Br2 in the presence of UV light, it will be giving you a free radical. Now in free radical halogenation, what is going to happen? Free radical halogenation of alkenes. Now this whole part is benzene ring and this is NO2. So this is not going to take part in the reaction at all. Okay, it is not going to take part in the reaction. That means the bonds are not going to broken or form in this part of the reaction because the reaction is happening with bromine and alkene. So the alkene part is this CH2, CH3. Now in both of, in these two carbons, we have two carbons and both of these carbons are different. Now, if I take the first carbon atom and I make a radical of the first carbon atom, okay, I can make radical of the first carbon atom. Now this radical of the first carbon atom is a benzylic radical and it can show resonance. It can show resonance. But if I talk about the second carbon atom, this second carbon atom, if I make a radical here, this radical is not resonance stabilized. That is why the PR will, the radical will prefer to form on the first carbon atom. Since the radical is formed on the first carbon atom, PR will attack on the first carbon atom and make a bond with the first carbon atom. That is why we have this as the major product. We have this as the major product. Okay. So the most stable radical will form major product. And in this case, what is the 
radical it is benzylic radical and in benzylic radical it shows resonance that is why it is going to be more stable Chale. that is it for today and i hope this helps and then we will meet in the 